Do you find yourself wanting medieval violence on a daily basis? I mean, do you hold metal objects in your hands and say to yourself, I really feel the need to hit someone? Well, so do we. For years, we've been putting on steel armor, grabbing steel weapons, and fighting the way our ancestors used to fight. Maybe with a little less dismemberment. You want to learn more? Yeah, I thought you did. My name is Ben Sugarman, and welcome to the brutal world of Bowherd. So let's address the elephant in the room. What the hell is Bohurt? Now, I'm just a guy who likes to hit people with steel, not some historian who can tell you your family history just by looking at your shield. Uh, luckily, we have a nerd that can tell you exactly what the hell Bohurt is. Hey, nerd! Oh, hello. Relax, nerd. Tell my new friends here what Bohurt is. Well, okay then, I guess. So in the medieval ages, tournaments were a bloody sport. It was fairly common to see tombs of knights with a large amount of injuries from varying points of history. This was, of course, from sustaining injuries in tournament play and not on the battlefield, as I'm sure most poets would try to have you believe. Tournaments were used to practice cavalry formations, mixed unit tactics, and testing weaponry. This, of course, became a bloody affair that resulted in tournaments limiting the contestants to jousting, as Sir Ulrich von Lichtenstein later famously portrayed before Sir William Thatcher broke several rules of play by jousting bare-chested. How historically inaccurate and- Hey, whoa, 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 let's keep this rolling, nerd. Right, right. Well, the knights still felt the need to practice their formations and fight in more mass battles. This was the birth of Bohurt, more commonly identified by the use of blunted weapons as defined by the light-hearted nature of the arena. What you see today in many ways very similar to the ancient sport of Bohurt. Knights or armored combatants of all social classes and nobility met in the field to fight each other. Bohurt was described as a more friendly atmosphere. It was common to see all sorts of poets, musicians, vendors, artisans, and fighters of all nobility and social classes fight and participate. Tournaments were very much for the nobility and had a bloodier, more insulated perception to them. Interestingly, we see a core deviation of... Alright, alright, that's enough, nerd. We get it. Fighters needed to fight, but too many were dying. So, Bohurt was created. Bringing it to the present day, Bohurt uh, has a few more common names, like Armored Combat or Steel Fighting. There's no it's the same game, but with a little more familiar for the rest of us that don't have a fucking master's degree in medieval history. Anyway, Armored Combat is a sport, first and foremost. I make this distinction because there are similar events like historical reenactors that have similar armor and weapons but are meant to put on a show and perform a scripted performance. Remember, they're merely actors. Armored combat is not pre-planned. There's no choreographer, there's no stuntman on standby, and on top of that, these are not prop axes. They fucking hurt. Now to follow that idea, there's a basic distinction that I need to be absolutely clear about. This is not a fucking LARP. The term live action role playing is for people who assume a character whenever they armor up. We do not do that. My name is Ben Sugarman right now. When I armor up, they get cracked in the head with an ax. And later when I party with the guy that hit me with that ax. But for tax purposes, I'm Dave Grohl. I mean, go pester him for my taxes. I mean, clearly there's a resemblance there. And those nerds at the IRS, they fall for it every time. Now, uh, what were we talking about again? Ah, yeah, LARPers. Now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing but love for the LARP community. I mean, hell, I even hop in a LARP every once in a while, you know, just to diversify my fighting portfolio. Besides, too much in the world has gone to shit, so you don't need some stick jock behind a monitor just to make you feel bad about what you do on your days off. I mean, we just work hard to uh, define ourselves as an international sport. We get a little jumpy when people make the comparison. Although, that may just be the pre-workout we just snorted. <sighs> okay, okay, I'll stop beating a dead horse. Time to actually talk about our sport and not talk shit. The two main distinctions in Bohurt are mostly by how many people are fighting. Our two main pillars of armored combat are duels and melees. Now, duels are a one-on-one -on -one fight, while melee is more team-on-team. -team. There's a lot to cover in this video, and we're going to be painting with some broad strokes. 
So don't worry if you still have questions and shut the fuck up to my pedantic comment section. Ready to catch every short explanation with a thousand and one different circumstantial rules and league preferences. I mean, I'm getting my new friends caught up to speed. You can poison their mind with specifics later. This one does not comply with your request. Organic mines are of soft materials, optimal conditions to alter to correct forms. Wait, who the hell are you? This one is not specific. This one is an extension of Authenticity Empire. Correction, Authenticity Committee. And I'm guessing there's no talking you out of being here. Correct, this human learns quick. Committee has determined that you may continue with introductory indoctrination. Anyway, even with only hitting the basics, this is going to be a long one. So, check the description for timestamps if you're in that much of a rush. And for all my lovely people out there who watch this video in its entirety, my YouTube analytics and I thank you. You the real MVP here. So, like I said, duels and melees. Let's get into it. Now, duels are a one-on-one -on -one fight that is meant to test your skill with a specific weapon. The match type vary by the weapon that you're using. For example, there's sword and shield, there's long sword, there's pole arm, sword and buckler, I mean, that's just naming a few. And no matter what the rule set is, the rules are fairly similar. Duels are scored by landing strikes on your opponent anywhere from ankle to head. The fighter who lands the most strikes wins the round. Win two rounds and you win the fight. Keep in mind that if you land the same amount of blows or the judges can't determine a clear winner, the round is a draw and you keep fighting. Rounds are one minute each with one minute rest in between rounds. Pretty simple, right? Try telling that to your local point counter. I mean, the only people happy at the end of a duel is no one. Everyone always wants to bicker about scores, judgment calls, but you didn't hear that? This sport is great. Stare directly into the light and forget the past 10 seconds. So now for the smart ass in the back that's saying, but Shug, what about the medieval MMA I saw on YouTube? They were punching, kicking, grappling, yeah, 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 don't get ahead of me. There's a second form of one-on-one -on -one combat that really is fairly new to the steel fighting sport. That's called pro fights. And while duels are designed to test your skill with the weapon, pro fights are made to test the fighter as a whole. That's why kicks, punches, throws, and other non-weapon strikes are essential in pro fights but are not counted for points in a duel. Designed to be the equivalent of UFC for armored combat, pro fights are mainly scored on a combination of ring control, aggression, and weapon strikes. Now, like I said before, we're gonna be brushing with some wide strokes here so you rule nerds can calm down and just shut the fuck up. Pro fights are very much a new fight type that is becoming a little more standard within tournaments, but is still very much a work in progress. If you're interested in fighting this fight, talk to some of your local fighters just to see what the local standard is. There's a few small rule changes depending on what league you're fighting in, but that's the very basics of pro fights. Now, enough of the cocktail hour. Time to sink your teeth into that juicy steak of Bohurt. Let's talk about the big battles you probably saw online, the melee. Now, melee is a broad term used to talk about any team battle, whether it's five on five, 16 on 16, even 150 on 150. Watching melees for the first time can feel like, holy shit, this looks like a bunch of armored savages running and chopping like a shark with blood in the water. Nah, don't worry, be patient. We're going to make this a little easier to follow. Let's cover the basics of the rules so we're all on the same page. Now the match will start with fighters entering the ring, or as we usually refer to it, the list. Now, there's no standard on how big the list is, just needs to hold everyone in it. As the fighters enter the list, the rest will check and make sure the helmets are strapped in. Now, like I said before, there are multiple forms of melee. There's 3 on 3, 5 on 5, 10 on 10, so up from there. Now, keep in mind, as I run down these rules, nothing really changes as more fighters enter the list. So let's run through a match of fives just to get the feel of a standard fight. Five fighters from each team will enter the list. The fighters do not have to meet a weight standard, height requirement, nothing. You can build your team however you want. Build your team to be a bunch of fast running small guys or go heavy and stomp around the list. I mean, the choice is yours. Fighters can also bring in an assortment of weapons, speaking very broadly. You can bring in a sword, falchion, axe, mace, really doesn't matter. 
As long as you can find some historical documentation for the weapon, bring it in. Confused about what counts as historical? Don't you worry, baby bird. The weapons video, much like this, will be coming in the future. The point being, as long as the weapon is historical, you can bring it in. Yes, that means movie prop weapons and Dark Souls inspired weapons are not allowed. Now once everyone is in the list, the head ref will stand in the middle, ready both teams, and start the fight. Both teams will use their weapons, cross check each other, grapple, or really do whatever they need to get the other team on the ground. When only one team is on their feet, a winner is called. And while this sounds simple, so does football. Get the ball across the line, simple shit. Turn on ESPN and you'll get a 24 hour news cycle of football analytics, play breakdowns, useless stats to improve betting spreads. I mean, obviously there's more to it, so let's get into it. Melees go by a last man standing rule. You're considered down once you have three points of contact on the ground. You use your weapon to lean on, your knee touches the ground, you use your hand to balance, and you're down. And you're down for good. Don't be that guy who gets up because the ref didn't see it. We've all been there once, but don't go there twice. Be the team with the last fighter standing, and you win the round. Now, the only time you'll see the round end early is if there's a three-on-one scenario. That kind of scenario does not end well, and you're going to get yourself hurt. So we will stop the fight before it gets to a dangerous point. Now, although I say that with a big caveat. If the match is 10 on 10 and you have two other teammates standing, but five guys on the enemy team decide to swarm you and chop for days, it's perfectly all right. 3 on 1 only applies to the final count of fighters on the field, not the overall ratio of fighters. Now, if you're also wondering who the hell is that out there with no armor on, that would be our refs. Yes, you need to be a little bit crazy to control crazy. Now keep in mind that the primary concern of the refs is the fighter's safety. They're not implicitly out there to sit a bunch of fighters because of technicalities, but they will stop something if they see something unsafe. Take that into consideration anytime a ref stops the, fu stops the fight or has to make a judgment call. I mean, you instantly lose all brain cells once you put on a helmet and th they are the final say. When a ref stops a fight to hand out punishment, it is in the form of either red cards or yellow cards. The yellow cards are used as a disciplinary warning. If you break a rule in a round and the ref catches you, you may get a yellow card and you're down for the round. Fight a clean fight for the rest of the tournament and really all is forgiven. Receiving a red card is a little more serious. Generally, this will result in the fighter being kicked out of the tournament with varying levels of punishment depending on your league. Check your rulebook for specifics. So, some common rules to watch out for so you don't get yourself a yellow card or a red card collection. No strikes to the back of the knee. That's a big one and that's one that really carries no matter where you fight. It's a, spo it's a spot that's way too difficult to reliably armor and is generally an area that will cause permanent damage. Remember, we're all friends here so no one actually wants to hurt anyone. Next is hooking someone once you go down. Now this one may cause someone to put a bounty on you and it's generally a scumbag thing to do. When you go down, it's your job to disengage and sit up. If you make an effort to bring someone to the ground after you're declared down, the ref will stand up the fighter you took down and you will most likely get his chopper friend, probably give him some payback that next round. Also, I don't think this needs to be mentioned, but we want to have future generations play this sport. So let's not chop down the potential population if you get my drift. Don't be a dick. Don't hit the dick. Wait, that got censored? Using your vocabulary to describe the genitalia is strictly prohibited. However, using said vocabulary as colorful description is permitted, while at the same time trashy. Okay, great. I'll keep that in mind. You got any other restrictions? Griffin helmets are not allowed. Visors extending past the base of bassinet helmets with graphonic visors violate an authenticity standard and violates the prime directive of authenticity. Destroy the Griffin meatbags. Authenticity Empire will destroy the Griffin army for total meatbag dominance. Well, that probably bought us some time. Uh, let's keep going before they recover and start yelling again. So, what happens if you lose your weapon? Simple, go get another one. 
Your team can hand you another weapon from your team's corner and only your team's corner. We do not do delivery, only pickup orders here at McBowhurt, home of the true Big Macs. Now, the important part here is that you can't make any offensive moves while trying to get a new weapon. That includes trying to throw someone who is uh, grappling you, cross-checking someone along the way, or trying to grab another fighter's weapon as you're trying to get your own. All you can do is run to your corner. Now, there's a little bit of confusion about how long you have to get another weapon. It seems like it changes from no time limit to 20 seconds and 10 seconds, back down to no time. Just do yourself a favor and get some clarification from the league uh, you're fighting with before the event actually starts. So let's review those rules real quick. Don't hit the back of the knees or below the belt. Once you're down, stay down. Grab new weapons only from your corner and listen to the ref when they make a call. Now, that's the most obvious rules. If you only know those core rules, you'll be able to follow about 90% of the fights you watch. Now, of course, we need to make my rule crazy friends here happy, so let's get a little more specific and talk about those annoying rules that will end up popping their ugly heads up from time to time. So, here are some smaller rules that are still important, but you should check with your league before you start fighting. First is shots to the neck. Now, some leagues allow strikes to the side of the neck, but strictly forbid you from striking the front or back of the neck. Some outlaw any strikes to the neck entirely. You know, play it safe and double check before swinging. Using the list itself also varies between leagues. I mean, most of Europe and some of the US has a rule that essentially there are no rules when in regards to the list. You can grab it, leave it, marry it, all kosher in our books. The last one may vary from state to state, and I'm looking at you, Alabama. Now, the alternative is a minimal approach to the list. You can rest your arm on top, but you cannot hook yourself to the list. It certainly makes the rounds fly by quicker. It makes it a little more exciting, but you can also be sat down for a dumb reason, and it'll stop the flow of the action, and you'll sit down from a technicality. Now, I know that was a lot to take in. I'm seeing that glazed over look my school teachers yelled at me for. So let's take it back and review this shit from top to bottom. Bowhurt, also known as steel fighting or armored combat, is a sport that uses steel armor and steel weapons to engage in non-scripted full force combat. The weapons are blunted, the armor is actual steel. There is no reenactment element to it, these are athletes playing a sport to determine a winner. Now there are two basic categories of fighting, duels and melees. Flying solo or bringing your friends. Duels are a one-on-one -on -one fight that are meant to test your skill with a weapon. May that be longsword, polearm, sword and shield, you get the picture. As such, only strikes with the weapon award points. Rounds are one minute with one minute break in between rounds. Win a round by scoring the most points, win two rounds, and you win the match. Pro fights are very similar to duels, but test a fighter's overall skill. Like UFC, pro fights uh, measure the fighter as a whole meaning punches, kicks, throws, all these score points. This is still a new rule set and scoring are all subject to change. We'll probably need a new video in a few months, so subscribe. Melees are the team fights of armored combat. Ranges anywhere from five on five to 150 on 150. Now fighters fight until someone hits the ground, meaning three points of contact touch the ground. Once you're down, you're down for the round. No hitting the back of the knee, below the belt, and ass before hitting the neck. Don't pick up weapons from the ground that that counts as being down. Go get new ones from your corner. Check with the head ref before the event to see what rules you are using as far as the list goes. Be the last one standing or force a three on one and you win the round. Good sequence complete. Resuming task of correcting authenticity and historical context of brainless meatbag talking to himself in front of camera. Oh, great. We got our friend from Authenticity back online, which is a perfect place for us to take a little break. Next video, we'll be covering the weapons of our sport, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the basics of Bohurt. Click that bell to be alerted whenever we go live, bringing you Bohurt straight to your living room. Now, I want to thank you for tuning in and supporting the new sport of Bohurt. My name is Ben Sugarman. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the list.